Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie Mary and today we are looking into the impact of coffee and actually also tea but mainly coffee. This is a continuation of the video I made about the impact of chocolate. In that video I said I wanted to do one about coffee. It's been highly requested so let's talk about it. But before we do so this video is sponsored. Da, 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 da. This video is sponsored by REN. REN is a solid carbon offsetting program. And I've talked a lot about offsetting and carbon offsetting. I have a whole video about the impact of carbon offsetting, how that industry is really untransparent and how there's a lot of not very solid programs out there. And you know, how also the individual carbon footprint has actually been a marketing scam from big oil industries in order to make consumers believe that they are to blame for the majority of the impact while it's actually those industries that are to blame for the impact. Anyway, REN is not a part of that. So there are tons of untransparent and also unsustainable carbon offsetting programs out there. So one of the things that I look for is what kind of projects this carbon offsetting program supports. And I'm really happy to see the diversity of programs and projects that REN is taking on. On REN's platform, they can help assess your impact and suggest different projects to support as compensation. And it's not just a tree planting scheme. They have projects that provide clean cooking oil for refugees, projects that protect indigenous communities in the Amazon, and projects that prevent wildfires in California's old growth forests. We love to see it! With the amount of times I've been disappointed by carbon offsetting programs, I love to see this. Also, the first 100 people to use the link in my description will get an extra 10 trees planted in their name by an actual good tree planting program. We love to see it. You can take an impact test on their website and you can also sign up for a subscription that compensates for that impact. Which is really amazing. Thank you so much to Ren for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the impact of coffee. As I said in my impact of chocolate video, I saw a lot of interest for the impact of coffee and that does make sense because there's a lot of overlapping interest. Many farmers that produce chocolate also produce coffee. So we see a lot of the same issues. There's similar production line, etc. Coffee is also a product that's definitely growing in popularity and said in modern terms, it has quite a significant following. And second to oil, coffee is actually the most tradable product in the world. It's a very high commodity and it does have impact. Coffee is a $200 billion industry and that is in part thanks to big coffee house franchises like Starbucks or Costa or Nero or Tim Horton or Pret and many other franchises available that I cannot think of right now. Of course coffee was also popular before the rise of these international coffee houses but it's definitely a factor in its growing popularity right now as well. And according to the Fair Trade Organization, over 125 million people are relying on the coffee industry for employment. The issue with big franchises controlling such a large percentage of the coffee market is that the coffee farmers themselves are being largely excluded from the massive profits. 70% of the coffee market selling to big chains are smallholders and largely underpaid and exploited for their labor. Many average coffee farmers struggle to make a reliable living and earn less than one and a half pounds a day. A good step in the right direction is obviously to buy fair trade coffee. I've talked about fair trade as an organization and third party certification in my certification guides if you want to know more. Aha! And fair trade is a certification that seeks to ensure and guarantee ethical labor. The fact that it doesn't always do that is a different discussion. Fat trade coffee is definitely a great place to start, but it's not a guarantee for ethical labor and it's definitely not the only way to sustainability either. The biggest impact of coffee comes from the production of the beans. Traditionally, coffee is grown under the shade of trees where healthy flora, fauna and microorganisms can thrive. These healthy ecosystems help prevent topsoil erosion and also no synthetic fertilizer will be needed in this scenario. However, with the rising demand for coffee, farmers started using coffee plantations to meet demand. Coffee plantation uses sun cultivation and thus more trees are cut down. This removes the shade and also kills, destroys the healthy ecosystems that were thriving under that shade. The industrial production comes with serious impacts on natural habitats and biodiversity. 
2.5 million acres of forest in Central America have been cleared for coffee production. And a study highlighted by the WWF found that 37 out of 50 countries with the highest deforestation rate were also coffee producers. It also takes about 39 gallons of water to produce one cup of coffee, according to UNESCO's Institute of Water Education. In any form of industrial agriculture, including coffee production, topsoil erosion is a really big problem. This means that all the nutrient-dense topsoil that's usually maintained or created by ecosystems, flora, fauna, thriving and vibing, becomes displaced or tired out. So less and less can grow in the soil. And a study finds that if we continue this pace of industrial production, half of all arable land that can be used for coffee production will be unproductive by 2050. Another paper suggests that that number could be as high as 88% of all arable land being unproductive by 2050 in Latin America. And putting it this way is a little bit devastating, but it's estimated that for every single cup of coffee used, it is basically guaranteed that one inch of rainforest have been cleared to produce that one cup. It's obviously a little bit more nuanced than that, and there is a general estimation average involved here, but you catch my drift. So, how do we make coffee more sustainable? While the Fair Trade Certification seeks to ensure more ethical labour in the production chain, Rainforest Alliance seeks to ensure more sustainable farming practices. I also mentioned Rainforest Alliance in my certification guide, again, leaving it down below. I am not 100% impressed, sadly. In 2020, they updated their standards, so now it is no longer a requirement for farmers to provide shade for the beans. You know that thing that created the healthy ecosystems? It is required that by the sixth year of being certified, at least 15% of the farming area should be covered by natural vegetation. The bar is not super high. And Bags of Coffee with the Rainforest Alliance certification is guaranteed to have at least 90% certified beans. I also want to add really quickly that third-party certifications like Rainforest Alliance, like Fairtrade, etc. costs a lot of money to obtain for the individual farmers and for the individual small companies. It's actually really, really expensive. So there might very well be tons of really sustainable and ethical coffee farmers out there that just don't have the means to get certified, but that doesn't mean that they're doing a bad job. And contrastingly, there's a lot of companies that do have the certification because they have the means and resources to obtain it. However, they might not be as sustainable as someone who cannot afford it. There's just, there's a lot of nuance in certification and it's not always a guarantee for ethical labor, just as not having the certificate is not always a guarantee that they're doing a really bad job. Yeah. There are a wide variety of different coffee beans and they also vary in impact. One bean that has a lot of potential to become sustainable is rustic or rusticano. This type of bean can be planted in already existing forests and it requires very minimal alterations to the environment. So less industrial farming. You can also look for coffee that is shade grown. This means that the farm has returned to traditional coffee practices, which boost the natural biodiversity. There's also the bird friendly label, which offered sort of the same guarantee. Presence of trees can be really beneficial in coffee production because trees attract birds and that's a good thing. Birds can function as a natural pest control and it's estimated to be able to save 23 to 65 pounds of coffee per hectare each year. Go birds! And if you cannot find any of those labels, you can always go for organic. That just means that the coffee has been produced without pesticides and herbicides. It's not amazing, it's not perfect, but it's definitely a great start. So why isn't every coffee farmer using canopy shades if it's so nice? <laughs> well, in the 1970s, we developed a new type of coffee that could grow pretty quickly in huge quantities without tree shades. Instead, it needed direct sunlight, and this is how sun cultivation was introduced to the mainstream coffee market. It's definitely more efficient, you can earn more money this way. It's also just devastating to the environment. As this new type of bean became more widespread because of its efficiency and its productivity, more farmers started using it, they started cutting down trees, they started planting this new type of bean instead, and that led to a huge increase in pesticides used for coffee production, because now suddenly you needed pesticides because there were no aha ecosystem. But really, you cannot blame the individual coffee farmers for this development. The coffee industry has always seen these huge bursts and boom in demand, which means that most coffee farmers live in a constant state between really high demand and poverty. Now, one question that I've seen a lot in context of doing a 
coffee impact video is how coffee compares to tea in terms of impact and what option is the most sustainable. So let's take a look at that. According to the climate change food calculator by BBC, if you drink one cup of tea a day, you add an extra 33 pounds to your overall carbon footprint. However, coffee is 10 times as high. One reason might be that teas use a variety of different ingredients and herbs and many of them can be grown many different places in the world so it's an option to get them more local. However, beans require more specific conditions and specific conditions often come with specific impact. However, tea is not necessarily completely free of issues. We still see some of the same things in the supply chains as we did with coffee, monoculture, deforestation, topsoil erosion, pesticide use, etc. It's also all there. However, it's more prominent in the coffee supply chains. A Dutch study from 2007 showed that a cup brewed with 7 grams of coffee required 140 litres of water to produce. Meanwhile, a cup of tea made with 3 grams of black tea, green tea or oolong tea used roughly 34 litres of water. Also want to add in this context that many tea bags contain plastic and are not compostable nor recyclable. And you can definitely also say the same things with a lot of coffee filters for sure, but I wanted to add that in there as well. The best sustainable option when it comes to tea is looking for a loose tea that you can brew in a reusable option and then not adding milk to neither your coffee nor your tea. Or you can substitute cow's milk with plant milk instead to lower impact too. Actually, you can lower that impact quite significantly. If you add cow's milk to your drink, the milk will account for two thirds of the total carbon footprint of your coffee or tea, which makes it possible for one single latte to emit more than 340 grams of CO2. Plant milk all the way, baby. And uh, on that note, here are some other smaller sustainability tips that you can use to make your coffee or tea experience more sustainable. Use a reusable cup whenever you are buying to go. Most coffee cups today are non-recyclable, do contain plastic, even if it looks like it's cardboard. So simply having your own reusable option lowers impact. It's definitely also more sustainable to brew your own coffee with a French press rather than using those small capsules that are often not recycled. You can also save the coffee grounds and make exfoliating scrubs and DIY beauty products with that coffee instead of throwing it away. That's so nice. Then it gets, you know, to live on for longer. And the more you can use your waste, the more sustainable that product. You can also compost your coffee grounds, by the way, to make them work for you in a circular manner. We love to see it. Also on this list, I know I already said it, gonna say it again, plant milk instead of cow's milk lowers the impact of your drink significantly. And lastly, you can also use your coffee grounds or tea leaves as fertilizers in your garden, in your house plants, etc. Really cool. And that was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something about coffee and tea and how to make that more sustainable. Leave your thoughts down below. I would love to hear you guys out. Also, let me know if you have anything you want to see an impact video on. I would love to hear you guys out. I would love to do it. Also, a big thank you to Ren for sponsoring this video. I've left all the links you need to know about them down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste content and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.